this tutorial, I'm going to go over your basic text formatting options. So I'm going to go to File and Open. In Chapter 5, Folder 2, I have three files here, and I'm just going to start on the first one. Okay, I got some pretty basic uh, text right here, but all the text looks the same. So what I'm going to do before I edit is Command T. I want to bring up my character panel. Now I can take my type tool, highlight the first line of text right here. I can change the font by clicking the pop-up. Maybe we'll go with, um, let's scroll down here to Arial Black. Here's my font size. I can hit the up arrow, blow up that type. Then I've got all my text right here. Maybe I want a little drop cap. Um, uh, no, not at the beginning. That would be too crazy. Uh, let's go right here. Toddlers. I'm going to set that also to, let's try Arial Black again. <clears throat> Make that about 12 points. And let's set that to a little bit of a text um, rotation here. So I'll hit the up arrow because I don't have Arial Black in italic, but I can make it look italic. Now the problem is now I got to do that with every one. <clears throat> so I got to select this, scroll back up again, Arial Black, make it 12, do my character rotation right here, or skew as they call it. In Illustrator, it's called character rotation. Um, and you'll notice how this can be a real pain. Got to go back up again, change the size again. And all of this is to point out that there is a better way to do this. They're called styles, but I'm not going to show that just yet because that's more of an advanced text editing feature. First, I want you to see how annoying this can be by constantly having to change every single one over and over. And there's multiple shortcuts for doing this. We're just introducing you to text right now and notice how the type sits right on top of the paragraph so i can double click or sorry triple click 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 and increase the amount of letting for that first line maybe we'll set it to 19. click 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 set that to 19. click 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 set that to 19. Okay, click, 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 set that to 19. There we go. So now I've uh, spaced it apart. But if you have too much or almost equal space before and after, that can get confusing as well. So instead of 19, that's getting pretty close right here. I might want to triple click that and set it back down to maybe 15. Set these all down to 15. Click, 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 15. Click, 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 <clears throat> 15. All right, so there are some basic editing. And you'll notice all my type almost runs all the way across. So I could drag this over right there. Now it's really hard to read really long sentences. So after I've done my text editing, I can hit Command B for a box. Split this up into two columns right there. Make the gutter a little wider. And there we go. It breaks it up into smaller chunks. So it's easier to read. What am I going to read about? Toddlers. Then I start to read. What am I going to read about? School children. Then I start to read. So that's another way to do it. Okay. The only problem is by editing it and then changing the text box. Remember this was set. To 15 but the rest of my type was still set to 12 so that can really screw things up as well okay these are not the way you do things in InDesign okay especially if you do it one way then you change the look of the box that's gonna screw up all your type because remember the first sentence was right here the first yeah first sentence then I get to the next ones, and those are treated differently. So this can really screw up your type. 
Just be aware of that. There are differences in the way you edit text. We're gonna get to those. But first, when you go to edit text, you want Command T for your character panel. And what I would also recommend is Command Option T for your paragraph panel. Like other programs, I would just combine these two panels so you have them both ready to go, okay? So now that I have sufficiently screwed up this text file, I'm gonna close it. Don't need to save it. I'll go right back to file and open and we'll open up the second one. Okay, uh, fine font says I'm missing. So notice if a font is highlighted in pink, you are missing that font. Okay, I used a font called True Type. So I'm going to say Find Fonts. And right up here, okay, it says I am missing the Impact True Type font, but I want to replace that with what? Well, I'll click here and find this computer's version of Impact right there. It's just not a True Type font. So I'm going to say Change All. Change all versions of this font that it can't find with this font that is on my computer. There we go, it's not highlighted in pink. No more errors, fonts and graphing. Missing fonts, zero, I am done. Okay, so what I wanna do is make the word InDesign stand out in all these paragraphs. I made it stand out here, but I also have it here and here and here, I want InDesign to stand out as a product name. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take my black arrow, click, then I'm gonna take my eyedropper. I'm gonna click once on the word InDesign, and wow, that's looking weird. I don't want that. So let's go back, edit, undo. I'm gonna see if I can take my eyedropper and this time instead of just clicking, I'm gonna click and drag. Nope, doesn't do it. Okay, edit, undo. I'm gonna click outside and see if that helps. So now I don't have the box activated. Let's take my eyedropper, click on the word InDesign. There we go, see? Now, see that little T next to the cursor? I can highlight the word InDesign with my eyedropper and let go. How cool is that? Click and drag and let go. Click and drag and let go. Awesome. The main trick with the eyedropper is don't have the box selected because then anytime you click on red, it thinks you're trying to change the box. Okay, but the eyedropper is a great way to pick up attributes. So let me do that again undo 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 don't click on anything because otherwise you're telling InDesign you want to change this box you don't you just want to copy the text or the attributes the look of the text so you take your eyedropper click on the word and now you have a T next to your eyedropper it copied the font the size of the font the color of the font now I go down to this word, click and drag. Okay, it will apply that to anything you click and drag. So I can highlight Adobe and InDesign. It will change it. I can highlight God bless you Adobe and it would change it. But it's picking up these attributes and applying them elsewhere. Huge shortcut. I love that trick with the eyedropper. Just make sure you don't click on a box first. Okay. I'll close that and we'll go through one more here. File and open the character panel. Okay, again, got a big block of text here and all my text is right ragged or it's lined up on the left. Every line is a different length here. It gets a little hard to read when you have long lines of type. Okay, so I can click on a box, Command B for box, and I'll split it into two columns. 
I'll make the gap in between those, the gutter, a little bit wider. And I'll click OK. OK, but when I hit W, all of these edges are different lengths. It gets a little difficult to read, type like that. So I can click in the box, go to my paragraph, and I can center each line within its column. I can line up each line on the right, or in this case, justify my type. That is so much easier on the eye if I do it that way, okay? If I take my type tool and click, I am affecting this paragraph. If I click right here, I'm only gonna be affecting this paragraph. So if I click with my black arrow, I'm affecting all paragraphs. And later we'll get to all these little buttons right here. So if you hover over them, it says first line indent, let's click that. Now I can indent just the first line of every paragraph. We'll hit the down arrow, take that indent out. You've also got space before. So if I want a little space before each paragraph, I hit the up arrow. Notice how it pushes them apart. Not the spacing between the lines of text, but the space before each paragraph. And I can put that back down. Um, let's see, I've got a drop cap feature. So every um, paragraph can start with a drop cap. There we go. You don't want it one line. This is one line. So I want my initial letter to be as big as two lines of text. Now I don't want that with every single paragraph. You usually do a drop cap on the first paragraph of the page. So what I can do is highlight this initial paragraph, then do a drop cap. And then the rest of the text will fall into place, okay? So we're gonna be covering more of these buttons later on. You've also got your character panel. This is your letting, so I can hit the up arrow to increase the amount of space between lines of type or decrease the amount of space. I've also got tracking, which increases the amount of space between individual letters, making it really hard to read if I add a whole bunch of space. I can also make all my type stretch horizontally. So I'll just hold that down. You can see all my type stretches horizontally or put it back to 100. I can do the same thing with the vertical. I can squish it like we sat on the type or I can stretch it, making it really hard to read. Okay, and I've shown you character skew. So if I hit the up arrow and let go, it's like we have italicized text. I can highlight that and put it back to zero. Lots of room to play with your text. Baseline shift is a different issue. We'll talk about that later. But you have your character panel. I recommend you put it with your paragraph panel because there's so many features here that we can play with when editing our text here in InDesign.